I'd like to start a reading from Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, as we start a new series or a new subject of by the verse. Where every once in a while, where the Lord gives me something to say or something in my in my heart to get out, using this op this opportunity to get the word out for teaching. From Matthew 24, verse 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. Spoken of by Daniel, <coughs> the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Now here's the verse for today. And woe unto them that are with child. And to them that give suck in those days. Now this is talking about the three and a half years of the tribulation has ended. We are in the midst of another three and a half years coming called the Great Tribulation. As the Antichrist is revealed in Jerusalem, sitting where he ought not to be sit, in the most holy place. The church is gone. The church has been raptured. The world has now the leader they want, the devil, Satan. They got the Christians out. The Holy Spirit is gone. There are no Bibles. You are going to get what you want finally one day. But this verse, woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. That will be applied several ways. One way as, as we read, where if you're on top of the housetop, don't gather your clothes, go. If you're in the field, don't go back, go. This is a Jewish subject. As when they realize that the Antichrist is there, is spoken by Daniel the prophet, which is called the time of Jacob's trouble. They are to flee, according to Revelation chapter 12, to a wilderness which we believe is Selipetra, a place prepared by God, as Revelation 12 tells us, that Satan will be chasing them to kill them. Why would there be woe for a woman, our verse 19, would there be with child, or for a nursing child, what would be the woe? Well, the child would be a burden for you in a hurry. Time out would be needed, and I'm not talking about discipline. I mean to feed the child, to dress the child, to get the child going. Now, this is repeated in Matthew 24, 19, Mark 13, 17, and Luke 21, 23. We are told this passage three times in the Gospels where we're not told once about the birthday of Jesus. We're talking about children now and motherhood. We know more about a warning of a mother with a child in tribulation. The consequences of this verse that the Lord has laid on my heart. And I am preaching and teaching to church time today using a tribulation passage. It's possible. Number two point, not only time and, you know, feeding a child. It says in Revelation 13, <clears throat> verse 16. I'll be reading from 16 to 18. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. That means the entire population of the world. No one left out. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That no man might buy or sell, save he that have the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name.
Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Now to you, <clears throat> before the rapture has happened, and God calls away all his saints, before the tribulation period, may I read John 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Today, before the rapture, before your death, but more so for the rapture, <clears throat> if I break into this verse in 19 of Matthew 24, you need to be born again. You need to be saved. Mother, if you have a child and the rapture would be to take place, you have seven years of tribulation. If your child is one years old, at the end of the tribulation, your child will be eight. Having a child today and if the Lord comes now, you and that child will be in the tribulation period and woe unto them that give suck or are with child. You need to be born again now. What will be the difficulty of you in the tribulation and having a child? It says no man might buy or sell. You will not be able to get formula or baby food or any food or any fast food. No takeout unless it says save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of, the, of his name. Now let me break this down, mother. Do you love your child? And there will be a time maybe you will want to do what God wants you to do. Maybe the rapture would bring into you to know that God is real and the Bible's right. And if you are with child and you got a screaming child for food, you will not be able to feed that child unless you have the mark or the name or the number of the beast. The Bible says no man might buy or sell. I don't care what the Jehovah Witnesses tell you. I don't care what the morons tell you. You can stack all the food in your pantry for seven years. God says no man might buy or sell. Going through the tribulation with a child, mother, will put stress in your life. Because either you will watch that child die of starvation, or you will rebel against God and receive the mark, or the name, or the number. what the Bible says for you a Jewish mother today you need to believe in Jesus Christ Yahweh as your Messiah as you do not want to go into the time of Jacob's trouble Abraham Isaac Jacob the 12 tribes as Satan will have a desire of above all to hate the Jewish people as he's been trying to Get you since Abraham and Hagar. And look at all the enemies that Satan has put around you from Abraham's relationships, from Esau's relationships. 
of all the nations around you trying to kill you. And now, if you have a Jewish child, you now have to be abominable and worship Satan, the Antichrist, being in the most holy place that you know that no one belongs but God and the high priest. And that child that is starving in your arms in order for you to buy or sell, you got to have the mark, the name, or the number. And the Jewish law tells you you are not to print any marks upon you. You are not to be an idolatry. And did you read in Exodus? Let me turn there in Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20. You know it's Exodus 20, the big 10. It says, Exodus 20, verse 1, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, Israel, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That abomination, desolation is another god. It is Satan. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. He makes an image and makes it speak like Walt Disney World. Any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. That rules out the image of the beast. Well, look how much we, we, we looked into the commandments and we've broken the first two commandments already if you worship the beast and the Antichrist. And thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. What did they do in Nebuchadnezzar's time when he made that golden image? When you hear the music, fall down and worship. What is the image going to, what is the beast and what is the image going to make you do in the tribulation? Fall down and worship. Number three of the Big Ten. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You receive that mark to feed that child. That child will also be cursed. You have been cursed. If you receive that mark. You need to be born again. You need to be saved. So you don't go through the tribulation. That if the rapture you be taken out. Before this mess. Will come. Now let me talk about number three. We looked at the fact is, okay, if you realize there is the Antichrist, I gotta run, but I gotta get my child, I gotta feed my child, I gotta clothe my child, I gotta get out of here. And that child will be a burden. Can you imagine what a burden was for those children going through the Red Sea? Hey, look at the pretty little fish and they're sticking their fingers. Come on, let's go, Egypt's coming. I want to play with the fish. I want to stick my hand in the water. Why is it dry? Where is why is this happening? Where is Grandma going? And the children, you know, they're just we got to go. We got to hurry and get through this Red Sea. But Mama, I'm hungry. Mama, my foot hurts. You know. Number two. Your, your child, we talked about, is going to be hungry and thirsty, and you may not buy or sell. What's number three? What if your child needs health care? Ooh, I just woke up every American's ears, didn't I? I'm not going to say anything else. I don't want you to twist my words to what's going on in America with this health care. But let me say... Mother, you missed the rapture because you didn't trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are in the tribulation. You got a young child, you think, and he gets injured and he needs medical attention. You go to the nearest hospital. Let's see your forehand. 
Well, uh, no. Let's see your forehead. We can't serve you. Why well, don't want to get the mark? Well, we ain't going to take care of your child. You got a screaming kid that's in pain. <clears throat> and probably hungry. A double whammy. And you go to the doctor's office. And he says, no, provide your medical card. Show me the ID. I think America is taking a big step to the Lord coming soon. Don't show me the card. Show me the ID. But doctor, doctor, take care of my child. Not without, it says, and no man may buy or sell. That includes medical attention. Your child runs out in front of the road, gets hit by a car. He's there on the road. The ambulance comes up and says, ID. Well, it's emergency. 911. ID. He's bleeding. ID. Mother, you don't need to go through that. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as thy Savior today, and when the church is gone, so will you. Ye have must be born again. Let me read you something. Did I get there? Mother, what is the escape from? And he shall cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, flee and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that understands count the number of the beast. For it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. And before the rapture of the church, how do I get out of this? I'll look at two places of scripture. This is First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Paul is writing to save people. This is not you. If you have never trusted Christ as your Savior, you are excluded. But if you have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you are born again, this is you, mother. Concerning them which are asleep, those who have died, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I mean, you're going to, someone's died to say, they've got hope, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Don't cry like you don't know where they are. You know where they are. Cry because you miss them. Cry because they're going out of your life. But don't cry because of the death. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, I believe that. Do you believe that? Even so, them also which sleep are dead in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. All right, this is the Holy Scripture. That we which are alive have not died, and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. When the rapture happens, those Christians that are alive, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump, trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Those who have died, Peter, James, and John, all the Christians have died. Born again believers, the brethren have died. God is going to blow the trump. And their graves are going to open up, and they're going to what happens. 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. <clears throat> so at the rapture, those who have died are going up first. And those who are alive are going to be caught up with those who have already died. And we're going to have one good church meeting in the future where only saved, born-again Christians will be at this meeting. No unbelievers. And they then which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we're going to have a full church believer, born-again, saved Christians in the clouds one day. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. At that point, we call the rapture, the church is gone. What is left? All non-believers. All those who have not trusted Christ as their Savior. Revelation 4. Now, Revelation 3 concludes with the last church of Laodicean church age. With Christ knocking at the door. We're not going to read that. You can read that on your own. Verse, chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. Uh-oh. Talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one that sat upon it. When either dead or alive as a born-again creature, you are going to be brought up and stand before God. And that is in Revelation 4. Revelation 13 is when the mark of the beast shows up. You're not here. Now, if you miss the rapture, you do not believe the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You miss Revelation chapter 4. You will face Revelation 13. And then, if you're with a child, mother, and this is mother, I mean, I know everybody's listening, but this, is, this whole thing is to you mothers with children. As I said, the rapture will happen right now, and you have a child, you and that child are going through the tribulation. And what is a mother's love? How far will a mother go to keep her child from death, from pain and suffering? Now, granted, I know some mothers out there who, who just don't care. Hagar didn't care about her. She just threw him underneath the bushes and walked away. Read the scripture. The angel of the Lord, God, answered uh, Ishmael, not Hagar. I heard the voice of the lad. There are some mothers out there who don't care. But there are mothers out there who really care. And you know what? If you do not receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not take part in the rapture. You do not, are not, uh, Revelation chapter 4 called up to heaven you go right on with your life on this earth as Satan will set up his kingdom in the tribulation period missing 1st Thessalonians 4 missing Revelation chapter 4 now you're in the tribulation seven years now Let's read Revelation 13, 14, all the way to 18. Maybe, maybe I want to pick up a little bit more on that. Let me check this out. All right, let me start reading Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another... Now, if you miss the rapture, you do not become born again. You do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. The rapture happens. This is going to be you in the tribulation. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. 
He's almost like Jesus, but he's not. And spake as a dragon, Satan, Revelation 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causing the earth and them that dwell therein. Those that are in the earth and dwell therein are not Christians. To worship the first beast which deadly wound was healed the Antichrist and he does great wonders almost like a Pentecostal movement I guess you would say so that he make his fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men who have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, people who have who miss Revelation 4, who miss First Thessalonians chapter 4, who are not Christians, who have never believed the trust of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. The church is gone. Those who are born again, those who are saved are gone. This is not us. This is you that have rejected. That they should make an image. Uh oh, remember that Revelation, I mean, Exodus 20? Hebrew mom, Jewish mother. You remember Exodus 20? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. What is your Bible? What does the law tell you about images? And if you're going to follow God, Yahweh, the Almighty God, if you're going to do what the law tells you to do, you cannot worship that image. Okay, I'll do what, what God tells me to do, okay? That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. All right, number one. If you do not receive the image of the beast which violates the law, you're going to be killed. And knowing the counts of man, when you look off at Adolf Hitler and man's history, they'll probably take your child first. That's number four. Number one, the child's going to be a hindrance to get out and hurry up and go. Number two, your child's going to be hungry and thirsty. Number three, your child's going to need medical care. Number four, they'll probably take that child and use them against you. Mama, don't let him kill me. Mama, receive the mark. Mama. It ain't going to be the story like Fox's Book of Mars, a bunch of Christians, because they were under the Holy Spirit. They are living on to God. They've given their life to God. They don't care because they knew that Paul says to be absent from the body, to be present to the Lord. How about you living right there with Satan and have no authority and have no promise of eternal security because you did not believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior? He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, all those that are on the earth, everyone. I don't care if you're male, female, I don't care what race you are, I don't care what color you are, I don't care if you have a handicap, I don't care if you're physically able, I don't care who you are or what you are. All. Oh. To receive a mark in the right hand or their forehead. And Jewish mother, what does the law say about printing marks on your skin? You know why ta tattoos are a fancy today? Because they are just getting you ready to receive the mark. And it's amazing how many idiot Christians out there. Oh, I do it for Jesus and I've had them tell me on the street. I had one guy walk up to me, he says, well, I'm a Christian, look at my tattoos. You got two guys on a field, one goes out and preaches on the street, one goes out and gives out gospel tracts, gives his money to missionaries, and does what God wants, and one idiot gets up there and paints his entire body, and says, look at me! And his own mother tells him he's a fool. And since he don't listen to mama, he does not honor his father and mother like Paul says.
Now, which is more Christian and which is more Christ-like? Who does the media rank on more and who does the media give other time to? By the way, just to let you know, that is another reason why I will not watch your, your team there in Sodomite land. Because you got a Christian impersonator who violates the scriptures and flaunts it. So I ain't going to watch you guys. I don't care if you go to the top Super Bowl, which you, you didn't, but I don't care. It made me sick. That was extra. So, where are we? And that no man might buy or sell save he that have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You're going to have to be in a hurry to run from the Antichrist. That three and a half years when he makes himself known. After he makes himself known, he makes an image. First of all, he's in the most holy place. You know he's not supposed to be there. Number two, he makes you get something that the law says you're not to have. Law comes back in the tribulation. Your temple's there. Your temple's not there today. So you are back under the law of Moses, the Pentateuch. No one in that place is supposed to be in that holy place but your high priest and God. Number two, you're not to you're not to fall down and worship an image. Number three, that image will make you get that mark so that your son or your daughter may eat or drink. And if you want to do right, you're going to have to watch your children starve. What mother, what loving mother, should I say, would want to watch their children starve? Hmm? Number four, what loving mother would want to watch their child in pain and suffering and can't do nothing? Oh, wait a minute, let me, let me take that back. You can do something. But in order to do what your children need to get relief, you got to go against the scriptures. You got to go against the law. You got to go against the God that loves you. You got to receive that mark. You got to fall down and worship the image. And that violates the law, which means you're in violation of God. How about that? Well, what do I do? I pray you're hearing this message before the raptures happen. Because I'll tell you, if, if, the, if the church is gone and all, all of us are gone and you're listening to this message, you need to do what the law tells you to do. I'm going to tell you what, what it says. If you are in the tribulation, the church is gone, this is your salvation. Don't receive that mark and watch your child suffer. And watch you suffer. Now, I'm, I'm talking to mothers here. I'm not talking to fathers. I'm not talking to no males. If you are in the tribulation period with, us, with your child and you love your child and you're a loving mother... I assume by you continuing to listen to this message, you are a loving mother. In order to be, quote, unquote, you can't see me doing it, but quote, unquote, to be saved in the tribulation, you got to watch your child suffer. And you may even have to watch your child die for them to get you to receive that mark. You are not to receive that mark. In other words, you can't buy or sell them. Now, the rapture hasn't happened. You are still in the church age. What do I do? Maybe the Lord will come during my time. And I, I want to do what's right. I'm reading from the book of Romans. New Testament. Matthew. 
Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Okay? It's the fifth book in the New Testament. R-O-M-A-N-S. I don't care if you have to use the, uh, the index. Go ahead. Look it up. And the Bible is divided into chapter numbers. While you're in Romans, find chapter 10. I don't know how your Bible's laid out. Get a King James Bible. Find Romans 10. Verse 8. Now, with the chapters, you'll find chapter 10. Then you'll find under the chapter little numbers. Sometimes there's not a number one. It's so, uh, it, you know, it starts off. Then you'll go down. And then you'll see two, three, four. See, my Bible doesn't say verse one, but then goes two, three, four, five. I want you to find Romans ten. And I want you to find verse number eight. And I'm going to read to you what you need to do while the church is still here before the rapture. Even if you don't have a child, and maybe you are a male. You don't want to go through this time. You don't want to go through the tribulation. You want to do what God tells you to do. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the way. He said in John 3, 3, you must be born again. How do I do that? Romans 10, 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. It's right there. You got it. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou, put your name there. If, that if Mr. Smith, or whatever your name is, shall confess with thy mouth. Put your name there. If Linda shall confess with Linda's mouth, whoever you are, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine, put your, put your name there, heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou, put your name, shall be saved. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and God has raised him from the dead. That is the gospel. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, Jesus, shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, anybody, any race, any creed. For the same Lord, the Lord that's over the Old Testament is the Lord that's today. Is over all, is rich, God is rich, unto all that call upon him. For whosoever puts your name there. We're going to look at a couple more verses. We're going to stop with this one. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to get right with God and repent and do what God told you to do, get on your knees now. Ask God to forgive you of all your sins. To be washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that you may be clean. That you may be reconciled back to God by Jesus. Get yourself into a King James Bible believing church. Contact me. I will help you try to find one if you can. Be careful. Do it with prayer. Now it says, Whosoever believeth on him, verse 11, shall not be ashamed. Now let's go to John 3, 16. That whosoever. When God said whosoever, he means anybody and everybody. John 3.16 states, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever puts your name there. According to Romans 10, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. One last place. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Revelation 20, verse 14. And we're done. 14 and 15. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever, I hope you can't put your name there. Because this whosoever was not found written in the book of life. God gives eternal life. John 3.16 was cast into the lake of fire. You are at a point in your life, you are a whosoever. Whosoever can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, believe what God has done for you, John 3.16, be saved, and you got eternal life. Or you can be the whosoever that will burn in hell for rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, I do not know when the rapture is going to happen. I do not know when the tribulation is going to happen. I am not going to give you a date. But, if it were to happen soon and now, the whosoever is not found written in the book of life will go through the tribulation period and suffer all that I told you. But the whosoever that believeth that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish, shall have eternal life, will be raptured, will be taken out before the tribulation. And mother, your response to what was today, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, or rejection and you'll be cast in the lake of fire, and if the rapture happens and you are left behind, so they say, you're, if you're still here when the church is gone, that child is going to be a hindrance to you. And America is preparing you mothers. You know children in America today are a hindrance. As soon as they're born, throw them into uh, preschool. Throw them into uh, this pre-K. Throw them into kindergarten. Throw them 12 years in a public school. And throw them into college. And then once he, you know, let him go on his own. And their families today, they, I mean, their husband and wife get married today, and we're not going to have children because they're going to be a financial strain. They're going to not, they're going to be in the way of my career. There are men and women that sit down before they say I do, say we don't want children. You know, Satan is alive and well, and his time is coming. I tell you all, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved.